Okay, thank you very much for staying. I know, I know you are very tired. This was a long day. You are my heroes because you stayed to, to see our presentation. Uh, I'm Gaston Acurio, I'm from Peru. Uh, a lot of people told me um, a lot of times uh, what happened with ceviche, why ceviche became so popular in the, in the last few years. So what I'm going to give you today is the, to tell you the story of ceviche. So what happened, and uh, let me check if this is working. So this is starting, um, is this working now? Yes. Uh, a million of years ago, actually, with biodiversity. The Andes, in the Andes, nature made his work. In the Amazon, also, we have a country of biodiversity. Uh, it's a huge Amazon, almost the half, more than a half part of, the, of, the, of our country. Um, also in the desert, which goes to, uh, to the ocean. And in the Altiplano, which is the high Andes. And then, after biodiversity did his job millions of years ago, thousands of years ago, because of that, we started with our history, our culture. Different cultures, because different environments, uh, start developing their own culture all over the country. Uh, watch out, sorry. <laughs> and this was the end of our first period of history in Peru. And these cultures, they did their job too. So they develop, they domesticate, make domestication of the wild, wild plants that we have. Potatoes, of course. Corn, different types. Chiles, we brought a little bit of them here for our ceviche. Uh, different types of grains, fruits chocolate, strawberries. And then uh, we had a war uh, with Spain, and we became a colony for 300 years. And they brought the lime, garlic, and red onions, onions actually, first. So the story of ceviche started building at this moment, actually. Then Africans uh, arrived in a terrible story, terrible, terrible part of our history, because they arrived as slaves, and they brought some spices. Then uh, Italians arrived, thousands of Italians arrived, from, mostly from Liguria, from Genoa, and they brought their own ingredients too. Then Chinese arrived in the 19th century, and also they brought some of their uh, habits of eating. Then Japanese arrived at the end of the 19th century. They, all of them stayed, and they brought also their own stories. So with all this part of the history, uh, ceviche was born as a mixing, as a melting pot of all our history, all our communities that they mixed together as a families. Uh, they got married between Japanese and Italians, Chinese with Spanish, Incas with uh, Arabs, all, all were integrated. And our dishes start born because of this melting pot. Um, tiradito, and then all, all, all of our dishes, causas, papa la guancaina, tamales. All these dishes, sometimes they look uh, Arab, sometimes they look French, sometimes they look sp Spanish, sometimes they look Italian, sometimes they look Chinese, look like a, a bat. All of them, they have a Peruvian flavor because um, of these ingredients, which are the chiles. Sometimes you will think that this dish is like a European dish, but when you taste it, it's completely different. It's because of the, of the chiles. 
and uh, in a couple of 50, uh, around 15 years ago, um, we knew that we had something beautiful. We thought that it was not so beautiful, maybe, that it was nice just for our, our home. So we uh, decided to uh, convince to the world that uh, our ceviche could be a good weapon to make the people in the world fall in love with of our country, which is something that we've been uh, talking about uh, the whole day. How can we use our culture to share with the world, to build fraternity between countries, to build peace, to approach what we have inside to other people so you, we can share them, what we have with them. Uh, it's not only about ceviche, it's about any dish. It's about, for example, your dishes that uh, maybe we would love to have a, an amazing Turkish restaurant, traditional restaurant in Lima, Peru, for example, which would be amazing to have different types of cultures all over the world sharing together their food. So that's the that's a idea. But um, uh, because we, this is not working, sorry. Okay, here. So what happened? Suddenly, in the last 15 years, ceviche start uh, becoming a global recipe. Restaurants, Peruvian restaurants start opening all over the world in the small cities and big cities, uh, uh, in Europe, Latin America, the United States, uh, New York, uh, this is Macau, uh, but also um, chefs worldwide, not Peruvians, start putting ceviche in their menus. This is uh, my friend Alain Ducas menu with ceviche, uh, ceviche, and my friends in Spain, my French chef says that there's too much ceviche now in, in Spain. And this is very, very important because also they helped to Lima, which was unknown in the world as a food destiny, became a food destiny now uh, because of this job and because of this new generation of chefs that are, some of them, of course, Virgilio and Pia, are already on the top of mind of the world because of their amazing job. And there's a new generation coming that are inspired in that job. Uh, at the beginning, we were just a few traveling maybe 250 year, 250 days a year trying to spread the message. Hopefully, Virgilio arrives so I don't travel anymore. And, and there are a lot of new young chefs that are coming, preparing to continue to share in this um, story. But um, because there's a lot of people doing ceviche, I thought that it's time to go back to basics. So I'm doing a very, very absolutely classic ceviche with all the tricks that you need to know and you can succeed in your kitchen. Uh, limes, of course. Ceviche is a matter of acidity, like a lot of uh, Turkish dishes. Limes, uh, which are, uh, it has to be very fragrant, very acid. And the most important thing you need to, the first trick, never do this. Never do this because you will take out this bitterness of the white skin that you have on the lime. And we don't want bitterness on ceviche, never. Just acidity. The second thing is, tenías unos cortados? Sí. The second thing is you need to squeeze it just to the half. Then you do a lemonade with the rest. Y el pescado. Sorry, this is Jose, the chef of uh, our ceviche restaurant in Barcelona, Yacumanca. Okay, 
Thank you. So we have a corvina, lubina. You can do any fish, which is, it should be very fresh. Uh, the cut, thank you. You should understand uh, the fish. You have to talk with the fish to, to understand if it's uh, a firm fish or not. Uh, if it's too thick or too greasy, that will change the cut. In this case, it's a little bit lean. It's a little bit firm and it's not too big. So what we do, we're going to cut them on in pieces like this big, which is OK. And the most important thing in a good ceviche is to season it just at the beginning with salt. When I was uh, a kid, ceviche was made uh, in four hours. We used to marinate the fish in four hours, covered with uh, lime juice and chiles and salt. Now, ceviche is done with uh, almost seconds, maybe two minutes. Um, we need to understand why. Is because we used to think that lime cooked ceviche. Now we know that doesn't cook it, just marinated, changed the, the texture and the color, but not, uh, not cooked. So now we have a re good refri refrigeration, and we can just uh, appreciate the flavor of the fish. It's OK. We put this on a bowl. We're going to put salt. We make a move, so it's kind of cured a little bit. The second step is very important. Is choose the chilies you want to use it. This is very spicy. I don't know if you love spicy, but this is very spicy. I, I mix three. This one is called chile uh, ajilimo, red and purple. And this comes from the Amazon. It's very spicy. If somebody wants to taste it, you can, you can take one. And uh, you have to feel it, how much you want to put on. So we're going to add some of here. It's very important to do this. So to take out the, the fragment of the, line, of, the, of the chili, you put the, some pieces there. There, you mix again. Then that third step, you put red onions a little bit, not too much. All of this is going to give flavor too, not lime yet. We let it rest for a couple of seconds, the dishes. We want to put some garnish on the side. We will add some corn, fresh corn. We're going to add also some fried corn. Some sweet potatoes. And if you want some more chilies because people like it. Put it there. So you have it here. We're going to add some cilantro, which is very important for the fragrance also. And we keep going to mix here. We're almost done, huh? Mm, lime, slimes, okay, here. Okay. So we go this way. 
just not like this, it's not good, just like this. In the meanwhile, it's going to be cooked, uh, marinated perfectly. I have more here, ready done. Let it rest for maybe 30 seconds. And as I told you, um, our job is done. Uh, our mission is accomplished. Uh, so uh, there's a new job we're doing now, which is very important, because of a lot of chefs from Peru are working to spread our culture in the world. Uh, in my case, my job is now is very focused working on schools. We have uh, two million kids in public schools in Peru. So we build a, we're starting to build a system of food education in every school in Peru with uh, breakfast, lunch, free, based on local ingredients and local recipes in a very diverse country, which is very difficult to do. It's not only a whole country with one same recipe in every, in, in every village, different ingredients in every village, and uh, different recipes because of that in every, in every town. And uh, with a farm inside, so the small kids, since they are very, very young, they will receive inside an education about food, about nutrition, about values, about respect to diversity, about pride to their own culture, because we have more than 30 different languages in Peru. So um, we arrived to get nine ministers, different ministers of the government in Peru. Uh, and just uh, one minute while the ceviche is done. Oh, sorry. Can you, can you make it back, please? saludables, entornos sostenibles para crecer más sanos, más alegres, más felices. Desde muy pequeñitos poder relacionarnos entre nosotros mismos y con nuestro medio ambiente. ¿Y eso qué va a generar? Que seamos mejores personas, mejores ciudadanos y podamos en realidad mirar con esperanza nuestro país. A los 10 días el forraje ha alcanzado una altura de unos 10 centímetros y está listo para su consumo y darle su alimento al conejo. Gracias. Thank you. You see, I just served the ceviche while you were watching the, the video. A little bit of chiles. A he, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gaston Acurio. Now, Gracias, Jose. Mr. Susan will be giving you your Gracias. prize. 
May I please have you on the stage? On the yes, of course. Mary Center, please.